Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. Today's video, we're going to be covering problem seven from the practice midterm exam from the 150.5 class. And in the number seven problem we have here, some generalized shortened versions of the questions that you'll find in your packets. And here we're dealing with counting principles, permutations, and combinations. Now, generally, question A is asking you, in a rough, uh, round, shortened summary, how many different lunches could be made if you can choose from six entrees, four sides, five drinks, and two desserts? Uh, part B is asking you how many different outcomes are there for flipping a fair coin five times? Uh, part C is asking you how many ways can a professor select three students from a class of 25 students? And Part D is generally asking you in how many ways can Ms. Robot rank the top five students in her class of 25 students? Now, each of these run on different methods, as the first two are going to run on more or less counting principles. Uh, the third one here is going to run on a combination, while the last one here is going to run on a permutation. And we're going to see why and investigate why we're using those principles, all right? So let's begin with problem uh, part A here. And here we're trying to determine how many different ways could we select a lunch if we have six entrees, four sides, five drinks, and two desserts, right? So we have 6E, we have 4S, we have 5DR I'm going to put for drinks, and here I'm going to put 2DE for desserts. Now the way this generally works as a counting principle is we have to understand how many different ways we can make a selection. And to do that, we really have to generally understand how the tree diagram works. And from the tree diagram, we're going to get a better introspect on how the counting, how the counting principle works and how to fast forward this instead of making a huge tree diagram for this. So if we have six entrees, we generally have six different ways we could pick an entree, which begins our first selection. Right, so we have entree one, we have entree two, we have entree three, entree four, entree five, and entree six. Now from each entree, we could select a different amount of um, sides, right? So in the first, we're just gonna deal with one of these. We have four different options for the next one, right? And this is side one, side two, side three, side four. And if we just stop for a second and take a look at the entree one and how many different sides, we see that there's six possible entrees and there are four possible sides. So generally, instead of making a tree diagram to make and show as many branches as we can, we could generally just multiply the values for each. Right? And the reason why we're multiplying is because we cannot repeat these, these choices, right? If you go to a place and you're having lunch, if you choose an entree and you're to choose a side, you can't repeat picking an entree. You have to choose an entree, a side, a drink, and a dessert. And because they don't repeat, we're just going to multiply them in a simplified fashion of a combination. But this is still considered a counting principle and not a combination, right? Even though they work very similarly, this is just a straightforward counting principle. And we're going to take the numbers, the coefficients here, and we're going to multiply them. The 6 by the 4 by the 5 by the 2. So 6 times 4 times 5 times 2. And we know 6 times 4 is 24 here. Right? These two give us 24. Times 5 times 2 gives us 10. And 24 by 10 is 240. So we know that if we have the options of having 6 entrees, 4 sides, 5 drinks, and two desserts. There are 240 different ways we can have a lunch. All right, let's move on to the next part, part B. And let's remember here that there's no repetition here, right? And nothing will repeat here because remember, every selection has to be per different thing. So we have an entree side, a drink, and a dessert, and we can't repeat entrees for everything. And that's the way this works if we're making a selection for each of these, all right? Now let's move on to B. And in B we have, how many different outcomes are there for flipping a fair coin five times? Now remember, when we're flipping a coin five times, we have to understand that there is a, there is a repetition that's occurring because every occurrence of the flip will be the same. And we can also see that if we're starting a tree diagram for the first flip, we have either heads or tails. And in every occasion, we're going to see that the outcomes repeat themselves. Here we have a H or T, and here we also have the same outcome, whether it's heads or tails. It's repeating. The process repeats over and over. So the number of ways each outcome happens, this is the first flip, the second flip, the third flip, 
the fourth flip and the fifth flip. The number of ways every occurrence happens is always out of two options. So it's either heads or tails for the first flip, it's either heads or tails for the second flip, it's heads or tails for the third flip, it's heads or tails for the fourth, and it's heads or tails for the fifth. So we see here that repetition does occur. And because repetition occurs, we are going to get this same pattern for each number as we're multiplying, right? And this then eventually just becomes 2 to the fifth power, which also just gives us 32 different ways that this can occur. So there are 32 different outcomes for flipping a coin five times because the repetition repeats itself, right? And now, moving on to the third problem here, we have how many ways can a professor select three students from a class of 25? Now in this case, we have to, rem we have to remember that um, there's no repetition because you're selecting students out of a class and for every selection we make of a student, there's going to be one less student than that occurrence, right? And also, we have to consider whether or not order matters. Now, if we're selecting three students in a class of 25, it doesn't matter how those students are selected. It's sort of like picking a committee, right? And for that reason, order doesn't matter. So we know two things about this problem. We know that there's no repetition. And we also know that order doesn't matter. And because there's no repetition and order doesn't matter, we can use a combination to do this problem, right? And the combination, we won't need to use more or less a formula because you can use the calculator to do this step, right? And so we know that our number of selections, our n, is 25 students, and our r, or x, depending on how your professor does this, right? It's either r or x would be the three selections, right? So to do this with your calculator, you're just pushing 25 on your calculator, the NCR button, and then you're going to use the last, which is the number of selections, which is 3. Running this on your calculator, if you press enter after pushing these buttons, it should just give you 2,300 different ways, right? So how many ways can a professor select three students out of a class of 25? That would be 2,300 different ways. Moving on to the last one, we have, in how many ways can Miss Robot rank the top five students in her class of 25 students? Now this is worded a little different from what you have, but it's generally the same. And what we're looking at here is that there's a principle for ranking the top five students, right? And so because the, there is a rank system, a system of hierarchy, we know one thing, order does matter. And also, besides the order mattering, we know that there's going to be no repetition because you can't select a student more than once and place them in a position, right? So there's also no repetition in this case. So being that we have order mattering and no repetition, we know this is a permutation case. And again, our n is 25 students. Our r is five selections five students, and the formula for this one is going to be 25. We push the NPR button this time, and then we're going to have five followed after that, and you just press enter, and we're going to get a really big number for this one, right? So the number for this one is 6,375,500 different ways, all right? So this will be our solution and our number of ways that the professor can select five students in a ranking system. Thank you.